Okay, so today we're having a look at Uber Student, Linux for Learners. Now, Uber Student is a Ubuntu-based operating system that is targeted specifically towards uh, advanced secondary and tertiary level students. So it has a lot of pre-installed applications, tools and tweaks that help you stay productive in a student environment. Now it is based on Ubuntu 10.04, so it is a long-term support release, meaning it is going to be very stable, but then again, the software is going to be a little bit dated. So performance wise, you are looking at almost exactly the same as Ubuntu 10.04, which was a very well performing operating system. Now coming up in a future series of videos, I'm going to be taking a look at some of the tools and applications that come pre-installed on this operating system, uh, just for the sake of usability and seeing what this system has to offer. But first off, we just have the classic GNOME 2.32, which is very familiar to a lot of people. And uh, obviously because it is the long term support release, you don't have to bother with GNOME 3 or Unity or any of that. Now, Uber Student is developed by students with students in mind, and they actually do a really good job of presenting a coherent experience here. Uh, they throw in a lot of nice wallpapers, they throw in a lot of nice themes that can kind of cater to the average student. They take a lot of the mess out of tweaking the system for yourself so that it is very easy to get up and going, making it a very logical choice for students. Along the top panel here, we have all of the indicator menus that have uh, that have now obviously been upgraded since in, in future Ubuntu releases, including the me menu and all of that fun stuff. You've got the calendar, which is classic GNOME calendar, and then you've got your classic GNOME uh, notification icons here. Now, running along then to the left, we have all of the quick launch icons, as well as a sort of like a search bar where you can simply type and and it will bring up, it's a lot like Spotlight on OS X, that, uh, that this is a standard GNOME panel applet that you can add to your panel. Now, of course, having said that, the GNOME panels are completely configurable, as everybody knows and loves. And then the venerable three menu system up the top here, Applications, Places, and Systems. System has been nicely categorized here into Administration, Hardware, Internet, and Network, Look and Feel, Personal, and Control Center. And honestly, this is good to see as that it is quite easy to understand what's going on here, and it won't be very hard for the average user to figure out what they're supposed to be doing here. Hardware, it's categorized all of their uh, hardware utilities, including uh, making it easy to get the Windows wireless drivers to get that up and running. And then under Internet and Network, you've got all your Firestarter, you've got Bluetooth network proxies, uh, you've got your PY neighborhood or Pi neighborhood for your Samba sharing. Under Look and Feel, we've got all of the fun stuff you could want or need, including the Compass Fusion icon, uh, Compass Settings, G Tweak UI for the menus and for Nautilus. You've got Screenlets for your widgets. You've got Docky if you want to have a dock on the bottom of your screen, and you can choose your screensaver here as well. So it's very well categorized and it makes a lot of sense. Then of course we have personal, which you can add in your, your accounts, your assistive technology, keyboard shortcuts, preferred applications and startup apps. Control center and about Uber student. Now if we go into about Uber student, it talks about it's just a free Debian based operating system for higher education and advanced secondary students, as well as anyone who wishes to excel at the tasks and habits of top students and researchers. So uh, it is quite a polished system in that the branding is very consistent across the system. Even though it is Ubuntu, they do make a point of making it as Uber student and not just changing a few things here and there. Under applications, we've got bucket loads of stuff. So I'm only going to quickly fly through some of these and I'm going to be talking about some of these applications in future videos. So we've got Altro, which is pretty much, uh, pretty much allows you to dock any application that you have running to the system tray, which is pretty helpful. Calculator, we've got Dock Fetcher, which will automatically find documents containing keywords that you enter in. We've got Gnome Do, the drop down terminal. We've got KeyPassX, which is basically like a password wallet. Again, we've got the widget manager there. We've got VirtualBox. We've got VMware user agent. We've got Xtile, which is a window manager. And we've got Pi Renamer, which is for mass renaming files. Then under education, we have, again, a lot of categories here. We've got books, which basically are most of them are web links, except for Calibra, which is the ebook library management program that we've all seen before. Uh, we've got links to cheap textbook sites. Under research and writing, this is where the bulk of the applications are, and this is, of course, where it is, uh, where it is really geared towards. We've got your data, which is obviously open office, uh, as LibreOffice was not invented by the time that Ubuntu 10.04 was released. Under notes, we have Keep Note, which is a very nice application in its own right. Basically, it's uh, it's very much like OneNote sort of thing with categorized notes all the way down here. And the fantastic thing is here they they've actually gone to the trouble of giving you uh, of giving you a sample of what you can do with this application, which is really helpful. It helps new users figure out what exactly they're using this thing for, and you can see the the power of the application and what it's good for. 
So you can see here, um, you can just get a basic idea of the application here. So we've got college note taking example. It's all tree based navigation. Follow the hierarchy down and you can link all these notes together, insert whatever you want into them. And you can overall just pretty much take a note about anything. Uh, one thing I would like to see is a bit of online synchronization, either through Evernote or Dropbox or something like that to keep it synchronized across platforms. That would be awesome. But that's more about KeepNote. That's not about anything that this system has done wrong. We also have PDF editor and Ubernote, which again, most of the, a lot of the, uh, the links in these menus are in fact hyperlinks to websites. But the web services that they offer that they provide links to are actually quite helpful. So it's good to see them there. Presentations. Again, we've got a lot of stuff here, including impressive, which is a slideshow, which is a slide uh, presenter of sorts. And it's actually got a quite a number of nice features here. You've got gentle transitions between each of the slides. You can you can skip forwards and backwards and you can do highlighting and all sorts of other fun stuff. So it's just a very polished presentation viewer that I actually honestly haven't seen before. We've also got again a few web links and we've got presentation for most of it. You've got composer for your what you see is what you get web editing. We've got GTK record my desktop. We've got Python whiteboard for all your whiteboard needs. We've got screen toaster, which is a online screen recorder. And really, you've just got a lot of nice tools here that are some of them are rather obscure and others are well known that can just uh, bring a lot of extra flair to the presentations that you are going to be doing as a part of your the education. We've got Firefox web browsing, you've got Google Docs, Lix document processor, which is not one you often see pre-installed on systems, but it is a very powerful document editor and it's good to see it included here. It has a lot of powerful plugins. Then we also have Zotero, which Zotero is basically a, a set of plugins that you can use to accurately cite information uh, for bibliographies. So it's very helpful when you're researching uh, information and you need to be able to provide references for it. And then under self-management, we have personal finances. And again, we've got some web links here and we also have social networking like Facebook, Twitter and brand yourself, which again, most of these are web links, but just make it easy and more discoverable to find those uh, websites that are helpful to students. We've got time and tasks, Google Calendar, Mozilla Thunderbird, Osmo, Remember the Milk and a bunch of other web links as well. Study aids, again, mostly web links, except for Golden Dictionary which Golden Dictionary is essentially a universal dictionary. Wherever you are, whatever application you are, you can simply right click a word and, and look up the definition thereof. We've got a few calculators here and we've also got utilities such as Auto Key, which is basically assigning keyboard shortcuts across your system. You also have Genotero, which is uh, again a Zotero plugin that allows you to access those references from your toolbar. Dictionary that I've just mentioned. Top shelf, which is basically just a drawer that you can throw stuff into on the panel. And you've also got a language translator there and the lecturer tools. So you can interact real time with your lecturer if they are running the same tool. Under extras, we have codecs like installing the restricted codecs. Uh, again, you can either for free or for purchase. And these are just links to the package management system. You've got drivers for your hardware drivers and you've got a few other web links there for stuff that might prove useful. Games, we've got quite a number of games here, some of which aren't native Linux games, but we also have again links to Tux games there if you want more. Under graphics, we've got GIMP and Inkscape and all of the other famous open source programs like Pinter and OpenOffice Drawing. We've got a lot of help manuals here as well, both for Inkscape and GIMP, which is good to see. Photography, we have GNOME Photo Printer, GTK, GTCam and Shotwell. Utilities, we've got a lot of scanning tools, clip art, label designers, and we also have cheese there. Viewers, we have Adobe Reader 9. Calibre Evil Reader, DG View, and an HTML help viewer. We also have the Pictures Home folder there linked as well. Then under the internet, we've got a bunch of stuff like Firefox and Google Chrome. We have a lot of cloud links here that we've seen scattered throughout the system. Under email, we have Google Mail, which is just, again, a web link. We've got mail notification built into the desktop, and we have Mozilla Thunderbird for everything else. We have FileZilla, Spider Oak Backup, UGET, and Deluge for your downloading. Messaging, we have a quick link to install TweetDeck here. We also have Pigeon and Skype pre-installed, so they're ready to handle all your connectivity needs. And we also have Google Earth, Google Reader, Composer, like I mentioned before, Mario Internet TV, and Gpotter Podcast Client. And then we've got a few other links to ones that we've already seen in previous menus. Sound and video, we have a lot of great tools here, most of which you've seen before, including DVD ripping, audio ripping, disc burning, DVD video creating, and transcoding. Editors, we have PDV installed. We've got Amazon MP3 store links there. We've got players such as Audacious and Banshee, G Potter and Real Player 11, as well as VLC. So you've got a lot of stuff to choose from there. And you've also got a quick link to install the Movita Media Center. Utilities, we've got the ISO, we've got the ISO File Explorer, we've got a camera monitor, we've got DV Disaster, 
which is basically just uh, additional error protection. We've got easy tag for tagging your MP3s and media info, which will just give you the helpful information on what kind of codecs and stuff your media is using. Data backup, we have simple backup, and we also have a quick link to Spider Oak backup here as well, which is pretty well integrated. Again, we've got Remaster Sys there, so you can build your own live CD once you've customized your system to the way you like it. Add remove applications, Illyrius, Compus Fusion, and all the other fun stuff that we've seen in most Linux operating systems. Got some quick links here to the Uber Student Live help pages, partner, donate, etc. And we do have Wine pre-installed here as well with Play on Linux and Wine Tricks for all of your other applications needs. Then we've got the application browser, which essentially is everything I've just mentioned categorized into the classic GNOME 2.32 manner. So there is a bucket load of applications here and they've done an incredible job to be able to include so many helpful utilities into this system. And like I said, I'm gonna be going into some of these in the near future. So let me know in the comments below what you think is the most useful utility you have ever come across on a Linux desktop. And as this is a 2.9 gig download, it is kind of hefty, but considering the amount of stuff that they throw in here, it is a pretty worthwhile investment as far as bandwidth is concerned. Again, for a free operating system that offers a bunch of great student tools and applications, I think it's definitely worth the download. Give the video a thumbs up if you like the content and consider subscribing. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the very near future with another Ingalactic's opinion coming soon. Also, feel free to check out my blog, infinitelygalactic.blogspot.com. Links will be in the description. And also have a look at the Linux distro community on TeamSpeak. Again, links will be in the description. You can come and hang out with me and a bunch of other Linux YouTubers and developers and see if you can get your questions answered and provide feedback, etc. All right, peace out, everybody.